Hey everyone, welcome back to another Mattel Jurassic World review. Today we're taking a look at the brand new Primal Attack Soundstrike Irritator. This is another highly anticipated figure ever since it was shown off at Toy Fair earlier in the year, so I'm super excited I got my hands on this figure. This figure, along with the rest of the wave, the Majungasaurus and the Camp Cretaceous Parasaurolophus, has not been found in the U.S. yet at the time of this uh, review. I ended up ordering the whole wave from Amazon Japan. It came to just about $77 shipped or just over $25 a figure. So I'll leave a link in the description to Amazon Japan if you want to order this entire wave for yourself. And a little pro tip, if you order the Savage Strike wave from Amazon Japan, you earn points. So when you're checking out on these figures, just scroll down and look for the points you accumulated and apply them to your order. It will save you a couple bucks. So hopefully these figures do show up in the U.S. sometime soon. Um, a little ray of hope today. Some of the Wave 3 Savage Strikes actually showed up on Amazon USA today. I think it was Echo and Stiggy. So hopefully that's a sign that some of these very hard to find waves will finally be making their way to the States. So anyways, back to the review. Let's just go over the packaging super quick before we crack this cool figure open. Comes in the new Primal Attack packaging that we've seen a bunch of times already. You got the Primal Attack logo just below the tail. Jurassic World logo up in the corner right here. Picture of how the action feature work. Owen in blue on the front and spinning it around. You got a nice full art picture of the sound strike action on the irritator. And then right here on the bottom left hand corner, you have the pictures of the other figures in this wave. We already have the uh, Majungasaurus, which I reviewed a couple weeks ago. And we have the new Camp Cretaceous Parasaurolophus, which I will be reviewing that figure shortly after I finish this one. So enough about the packaging. Let's crack open this figure and take a closer look. And here is the Irritator, uh, the package. And I have to say, this is a pretty cool looking figure. Now, it doesn't look exactly like an Irritator should, but it's a nice attempt by Mattel. Irritator is a type of Spinosaur from Brazil. And a quick little history lesson of why this animal is called Irritator. The original holotype, which consisted mostly of the skull, was illegally collected by fossil collectors. And then later on, it was sold off to paleontologists. Well, when paleontologists got their hands on the skull, they realized that some of the skull was damaged and parts of it were repaired with plaster. So it became a very irritating task to try to reconstruct what this animal looked like. So let's just do a couple quick measurements before we take a closer look at this figure. This figure is 13 inches long from tip of the snout to tip of the tail and about four and a half inches tall to the top of the sail right there. So Irritator is estimated between 20 and 26 feet long. The original holotype is from a sub adult. So with those measurements, I'll put this figure somewhere in the 118 to the 124 scale range, depending on what measurement you want to go with. The paint scheme on this figure is decent. It does kind of just get really sparse right about the uh, hind leg region. The entire figure is molded in brown plastic. Then you have a navy blue head, and that navy blue color continues all the way down to the sail where it ends right at the base of the tail. I kind of wish that navy blue continued along the sail along the uh, tail right here. And then you have some sky blue highlights along the back and sail. And I know when this figure was first revealed in silhouette at Toy Fair, some people thought it was Ictio Venatar because of the split in the sail right here. But the reason for that is because of the action feature of the sail continued in one piece. You won't be able to get that uh, rotating action that these sound strikes are known for and then turn the figure over you do have a little bit of coloration along the belly right here and since we got the figure turned over let's just get the scan code out of the way i believe this one does actually scan into the fax app so let's zoom in and take a look at some of the finer details on this figure starting with the head you can see they gave this figure a very crocodilian like head and in all actuality this head sculpt does not look like the actual animal in real life, especially when you turn it around. The snout is extremely, extremely wide. It should be a lot more narrow, but you can see the nostrils are set back like they should be. You get some nice crocodile-like teeth painted in right here in off uh, white color. I do have a little bit of sloppy paint right here. And you know, now looking at this figure from the front, I can see a talented customizer maybe making this figure into Rudy from uh, Ice Age 2. Maybe they can just like, you know, trim off the sail right here. Someone much more talented than me could probably pull that off. 
you can see the eye is done in yellow and it's the same thing we i've been saying on some of the uh figures they just call the eye in yellow and the pupil color is just that blue plastic underneath i kind of Battelle seems to be like hit or miss which figures they actually want to actually paint a pupil on uh, on this figure it does not look that bad because the blue is so dark it actually makes the pupil look black and then opening the mouth up you get a quiet you and open the mouth up you get a very nicely textured tongue so nice touch in there and then going down to the neck you can see some of those nice sky blue highlights along the back you can see the sail right here done in that dark navy blue with those sky blue highlights and then going down to the arms you can see the hand claws are not painted same could be said about the feet i really wish they would at least paint the uh, toe claws mattel seems to be hit or miss on which figures they want to paint the toe claws on and then going down to the tail you can see that break right here which allows some room for the action feature and then you got more of that sail continuing down to almost the tip of the tail now i think this figure is just a little little too uh beefy uh for a spinosaur but i do like the aesthetics of this figure it is really nice uh, i love how mattel has given us some uh, really bizarre species even though this figure does not look really too much of what an irritator looks like i still think it's a really really cool looking figure articulation wise this figure does have a mouth that opens that far and closes i love how the teeth uh interlock with each other on the arms right here they can move forwards actually they can do 360 degrees they have a hinge which allows you to swing them out the back hips are on a pivot and just like all the sound strikes they are really really sensitive to movement and just triggers that roar if you just barely look at this figure the legs can rotate 360 degrees there is a lock and ratchet to lock the leg in a couple different positions and that is it for the articulation the rest of it is tied to its action feature now to activate the action feature and its electronic roars the tail allows you to rotate the head up and down that sound right there sounds like a new sound to me if someone knows that if that sounds on a different figure please let me know in the comments and you can also swing the tail from side to side Most of these roars seem to be re reused, but that one I said sounded different, I believe is a, that one right there, I believe is a new sound. All right, let's move on with some comparisons. Here it is with one of the human figures. Here it is with John Hammond. And here it is with one of the Savage Strikes. Here it is with the new Echo. And here it is with its wave mate the awesome awesome looking majongasaurus this right now is probably one of my favorite figures mattel has done so far and lastly here it is with all the other spinosaurus mattel has given us so far it's pretty cool that we actually have four different species of spinosaurids in the jurassic world line here's the legacy collection spinosaurus the succamimus flippity floppity the baryonyx from the uh, new camp cretaceous set and the new Irritator, and Irritator is considered one of the smaller species of Spinosaurus, so it does look pretty good next to these other three figures right here. It's about the size of the Baryonyx, but because the way the figure is sculpted, it actually uh, just looks smaller because its head is held so low. So final thoughts on this Irritator. I really like this figure. It's wacky and weird looking. I know the head does not really look like what a Spinosaur should look like, but this is Jurassic World we're talking about where all the animals are genetically modified. So that always gives them a lot of leeway with, with how their animals look. So I'm always excited to add a new species to my collection. So I definitely do highly recommend this figure. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, I end up ordering the whole wave, which came with the Majungasaurus and the Camp Cretaceous Parasaurolophus from Amazon Japan. It came to about 77 bucks or almost $26. Uh, figure and the link is in the description if you want to order it from Amazon Japan. I have no idea when this wave is going to show up in the U.S. And also, like I said, uh, some of the Wave 3 Savage Strikes just started popping up on Amazon. So hopefully that's a good sign that we'll be seeing this wave very soon in the States.
And that will do it for the review. I still have to do the Camp Cretaceous Parasaurolophus and the new Savage Strike Pachycephalosaurus. So be on the lookout for those reviews relatively soon on the channel. And as always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously and it's greatly appreciated. And I'll see you for the next one.